Hey everyone, it's Mace1370. We have a couple new heroes being released tomorrow. One is Shuren and the other is Sylvan Sage Vivian. So we're going to talk about both of those and discuss if they are worth pulling. Before we get into it though, please make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Also, please see the video description below for a link to my Discord. Let's get into it. Okay, let's go ahead and start with a new RGB 5 star, that is Sharon. They just put the preview video up. I think they gave her a little teaser the other day, but we didn't get a whole lot of lead up to this character. This is her skill 3. It looks like a giant snake is shooting a green energy thing at people. Uh, she's apparently a soul weaver. Her design looks okay. It looks pretty similar to other heroes, you know, from this segment of the story. Let's see, okay, so she's a soul weaver. Where are her stats? We can skip the history lesson. Here we go. Okay. Uh, she's Virgo, so she's going to have ML Chloe based stats. It's not horrible. She uh, will be able to be built tanky. Uh, interestingly, her HP, or sorry, her uh, imprint here is HP, so that's pretty standard for Soul Weavers, but her imprint concentration is effectiveness. Um, I think I looked at her kit earlier and has some debuffs in it, so that kind of makes sense. Yeah, overall, um, I think, you know, it's acceptable base stats. You know, there's plenty of, like, tanky made Chloe's out there that get the job done, right? So let's go ahead and fast forward to her skills. Let's see what her skills do. Okay, so here's her skill two. This is a passive. And at the end of each enemy's turn, she has a chance to CR boost herself by 20%. And that scales with the number of buffs they have. Even if they have 10 buffs, then that's only a 50% chance for it to happen. So this is probably going to happen less often, you know, than it, I guess, otherwise could. Uh, or rather, it's going to happen less... It's going to happen less frequently than not happening. So let's see, at the end of the uh, turn also grants a random buff and a barrier. So it's kind of like FCC, she gives the barrier and then also a random buff. The random buffs are attack, crit chance, crit damage, and continuous healing. So attack obviously very good, crit damage okay, crit chance useless, continuous healing okay. And then more barrier strength here in her molas. So the barrier is really big, could be nice I suppose. Let's uh, go ahead and see what her other skills are. Skill 2, more skill 2. Okay, so here, let's see, Deanna is using her skill 3 and then... Oh, I see, she got CR boosted from the buffs. Okay. Skill 3, may you perish. Alright, so this one is an AoE. Decreased buff durations by one turn. And debuffs with decreased speed and venom. Venom's a new debuff for two turns, and then gives her a 50% CR boost. So if she, I guess, buffs her CR by 50%, and then she gets a 20% boost, she could piggyback right up to the top of the turn order again pretty fast. What does Venom do? At the start of the turn, the unit receives damage equivalent to 10% of max health and is inflicted with injuries proportional to the damage suffered. Oh, I see. So it's just kind of like an injury debuff. It's interesting, I guess. That seems like a very uh, slow, slow like burn to get benefit from. And this is like a five-turn cooldown. I guess probably four turns after you mola. So if she CR cycles really fast, you might get to do this a second time. That seems pretty underwhelming, though. Here's her skill one. It, uh, how fragile, attacks the enemy with a 65% chance to inflict venom for one turn. After attacking when the target is inflicted with venom, increases... Oh, skill cooldowns by one turn. Okay, so she can't cycle more quickly. So I guess she could probably keep venom up pretty well. Pretty well. Um, especially if they don't have reliable cleansing. And you can soul burn this to increase it to a 100% chance and have venom go for two turns. That's okay, I mean, I think they're trying to introduce, you know, more answers to Apocalypse Ravi into the meta. Does this hero really answer Apocalypse Ravi, though? Kind of. I mean, in, in a lot of the cases, when people draft a Ravi, they're going to be doing a, um, a cleave or a very aggressive type of draft, and I feel those things are not going to really benefit from Venom, or you're not going to be able to combat them with Venom. Here's her artifact. So the artifact increases the effectiveness by 15%. Um, and then 30% at max. After using a basic skill, increases the combat readiness of the ally except for the caster with the highest attack by 10%. That's pretty interesting. I think the artifact is the best thing about her, to be honest. 
Yeah, this, this hero seems kind of underwhelming, though. You could maybe use her as, like, a, um, a long carry against, like, a bruiser player using Apocalypse Ravi. Those are pretty niche situations, though. Right. Maybe if they draft a Ravi and Crow, then you really get to get him with uh, Venom, right? All that injury. Uh, and then, I mean, her artifact will, will be good for her. It'll help her turn cycle and give her more effectiveness to build her, so her artifact will work on her. I like her lobby animation. That's pretty good. Let's um, let's let me pull up the journal really quick. I'm curious who else could use this artifact. Okay, let's see here. So this artifact gives kind of the uh, Soul Weaver and ML Cowric type of effect on their S1, where they see our boost, one of your allies, and we've seen that be quite effective with Cowric, right? So hypothetically, it could be good on the right Soul Weaver. Uh, we don't care about Shuna nor Tamarin. Uh, Dn does skill one a decent amount, so it could be okay on her. It's just really going to be hard to justify putting an artifact on Dn that doesn't heal your team, because that just gives her so much more sustain, right? With Rod or Crystal, I don't think it'll be better than either of those. Um, Elena, kind of a lackluster hero, anyways. So I suppose it. It actually could be okay on Elena because she pretty much just skill ones only after using her skill three. There's no skill two, so I think it could be okay on her. Might help your team CR boost, you know, cycle a little bit faster. So I think it's actually fine on her. Um, Amelia, I think you just want Crystal. It's better. Destina, Crystal, Water's Origin. These all seem like better options. And Destina is not skill one in a ton, especially in the beginning, like you're doing the two, three, two cycle. And then the match is probably mostly over at that point, so I don't think you get a ton of uh, value on Destina. Nobody uses Ray. Rowana, I guess it's kind of funny if you put her on counter set and then she counters and it activates a bunch, but if she was on Idol's Chair, it would just give you even more, right? Because she's getting hit and it's guaranteed, so that's pretty dodgy. Uh, DJB, eh. I think, like, Water's Origin or Crystal better. Made Chloe. Chloe's interesting because she has a stun on her skill one, right? And I guess she has that 18% base effectiveness that we saw on uh, Sharon's stats. So if you give her the artifact, she'd have like 50% effectiveness just for free, essentially. You wouldn't have to build effectiveness, but that's probably enough to threaten, you know, a stun on even things like Amelia and Deanne if they're only building 100 ER or so. And Maid Chloe does skill one quite a bit, right? You can Soul Burner to skill one multiple times and really boost somebody up. So that's kind of cute. Um, I actually kind of like it on Maid Chloe. Uh, Maid Chloe's not super meta relevant at the moment. Uh, Ruel, it's okay, but again, you're going to be doing skill 2, skill 3 first, so it'll be a while before you get value. Seems kind of bad. Blood Moon Haste also seems like it could work. I think it's better on Maid Chloe just because of the soul burn factor, right, with that. Um, with Haste, I guess it's alright. Uh, yeah, it's fine. I think Idol's Cheer probably better on him, though. Akades. Uh, no, right? These guys are not usable. Sinful Angelica, actually. It could work on Sinful Angelica. You know, she does her skill 3 and then she's gonna skill 2 twice. So two-thirds of the time you're getting value on the artifact. And at that point the game is you've either won or you've lost, right? Because she's lost her buffs and stuff. So hypothetically on Sinji it could be okay. It gives you even more momentum, which is kind of what Sinji's looking for. I think it has potential on her. These other, these other guys are not super usable, so I think out of all of these, the ones that really stands out are Sinful Angelica and Maid Chloe. I really want to see somebody Soulburn Maid Chloe and boost somebody all the way up to the front. I think that would be hysterical. Uh, but yeah, so in terms of whether you should pull Sharon or not, I'm going to say she's a, a safe skip. If you're you know a whale and you want to get everyone, then sure, go ahead, but I think that she's not going to be super meta relevant. Maybe in the most niche scenario she might be okay, but I think most people can skip her and you know it's not really going to impact you too much. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at Sylvan Sage Vivian. All right, here's your skill three. That's pretty cool. Yeah, see, this is a skill three animation. That was awesome. Yeah, I'm a big fan of that. Cool. I, I think her design's really nice. All right, let's uh, skip the history lesson again. So she is a cancer mage. Okay, so a Cancer Mage, so she has the same stats as, I guess, Mel yeah, Melum and Fire Tenebria. Yeah, so 110 base speed, 
So Millum, and Millum I've built a few different ways. She has an imprint concentration of crit chance, which is, you know, annoying for people who don't whale, but really nice if you do whale because it'll let you build, you know, like significantly better builds, right, than other people. Imprint releases attack, but you'll, you'll probably have her on the concentration. Millum is a hero that can be built kind of fast, but not super fast because her base speed isn't amazing. Like, I think I put fairly premium DPS gear on Millum, and it was hard to get her above like 260, 270 and still keep any semblance of damage, and that was with zero bulk. So you're not going to be building like a 300 speed Sage Vivian, but you could build a 230 to 240 with some bulk, right, or a, a 260, 270 with damage. Um, those I think will be kind of your options. And of course you could build her slower, right, with other stuff. So let's take a look at her skills. So this is her skill two, it's insight. So this is a passive. She gets three focus at the beginning of the battle and one focus every time she takes a turn. And when she's attacked, if she takes 25% or more of her max health and damage, it consumes a focus and decreases the damage suffered by 50%. That's a ton after being attacked. It also decreases her skill cooldowns by one turn. And then when more than one damage reduction, yeah, 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 only one applies. Uh, minus damage received. Oh, interesting. So I guess this could be even more with the molas. So that's a lot of damage reduction. And it looks like you're going to want to build her to turn cycle fairly quickly because it looks like, yeah, she gains focus every time she takes a turn. So you want to keep that focus bar up so she doesn't, you know, get depleted, right? Okay. Do they have a little image of this happening let's see okay so yeah there's insight it triggers so this is a rylet skill three and she takes 5k damage right when she would normally take like way more probably uh because rylet skill three hits really hard so okay that's her survival mechanism here's her skill three nature's judgment let's see this uh, gives her a focus so her skill three also gives her a focus Attacks all enemies, so it's an AoE, increases critical hit damage of all allies. Critical hit damage, just for reference, is an okay buff. It obviously increases your damage, but it doesn't do it as much as attack does. Um, so think of it as like a nice little benefit, and the benefit really is that it stacks with attack. So uh, of all allies for two turns and recovers the health before increasing the attack of the caster. So this is not white, so I guess this is not an attack buff. Amount recovered increases proportional to the target's max health. Oh, and it also gives her health too. Yeah, and then increased attack and stack up to three times. Okay. So every time you skill three, it's going to ramp up damage like Landy, I guess. All right. So I think we already saw the skill three animation. But so this is an AoE. You know, this isn't a hero that I think the multipliers make or break. And I think they showed her multipliers. And I think her skill three was like slightly below Ida in terms of how hard it hit, and her skill 1 was just about the same as Ida. So I think she'll do decent damage. Alright, here's skill 1. So this is attacks the enemy, increases speed of the caster for one turn, and that's it. And you can soul burn it for only 10 souls, and it turns into an AoE that does not trigger dual attack. Does not trigger dual attack is like music to my ears, because dual attacks are triggering. Haha. -ha. So I think this is okay. You know, the fact that this requires souls to make AoE means that you're probably going to want to run her on book, right? And I think it'll be a fairly decent hero to take into, like, Spectre Tenebria, because it'll give you guaranteed reach into her. You know, they can't be countered, so that's always nice. I think it was plugging some numbers into the damage calculator, and it looks like you'll be able to do decent damage with her. It'll probably take two to three of her skill ones, you know, to kill a Spectre, though. Building her to one-shot a Spectre seems unlikely.